Okay, so the guy who directed this movie is a South Korean filmmaker. And the movie stars Chris Evans and Jamie Bell and Octavia Spencer. Hmm. Anyway, hey there guys, what's up? It's Autobot Mike 18 here with another movie review. A movie review that is very, very overdue. Nevertheless, I apologize for the lateness of review because this movie came out in June. Nevertheless, I have an excuse because it was given a limited release, so I didn't get a chance to see it now. And the movie I'm going to be reviewing in this video, guys, is Snowpiercer. Now, uh, I do not have a poster for Snowpiercer, guys. I did not get a chance to print one out before I started the review, so I do apologize for that. Um, but Snowpiercer is a movie that uh, came out j the end of June, right before Transformers Age of Extinction came out. I remember, like, the two came out, like, probably on the same weekend, actually. And everyone who hated Transformers was like, go see Snowpiercer, it's, it's ten times better. And uh, I wanted to see the movie because not only was it raved by many people, it's also being noted as one of the best films of the year so far. Um, and uh, so I wanted to see it, never got a chance to, and uh, it never did it did, never did come to my theater, of course. Uh, it's been months since it's been out in limited release. But I did luckily get a chance to watch it online, even though I don't like doing that. I do it when I have to. So luckily I got to watch Snowpiercer. And uh, it's from a South Korean filmmaker, as I said earlier, South Korean director. And I gotta, I gotta read his name. I wrote it down. I can't, I can't remember it, and I'm, I'm gonna butcher it too. Uh, here we go. Bong Joon Ho. That's the name of the director. From my stupid pronunciation, I probably pronounced that wrong. I apologize. But that is the name of the filmmaker, and uh, it came out like I said this June. And a lot of you guys recommend to me. Even a lot of friends have recommended the movie to me, saying, "Wow, this movie's one of the best year. You've got to see it." And I finally got to see it, and now I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. Um, so without further ado, guys, before I give you my thoughts, I'm going to get into the plot synopsis of Snowpiercer without spoiling anything for you guys. And uh, Snowpiercer is, uh, takes place about uh, 30 years from now in the not-too-distant future. It's set in like 2031, 34, something like that. And um, Basically, most most of the Earth's population has been completely wiped out after a failed global warming experiment uh, went wrong. Uh, scientists were working on this thing with global war this global warming experiment. It, it messed up the Earth's atmosphere or something like that. I forget exactly what happened, but it turned the Earth into a complete frozen wasteland, and that the whole entire planet is frozen. There, it's 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 one giant ice age. Okay, killing off a good 95% of the Earth's population, maybe more than that. Now, there is one group of surviving humans left. There's like hundreds of hum humans left, and they are on the only place on Earth that is actually warm, and it's a train, okay? They are on a train called Snowpiercer, hence the title of the movie, and it literally goes from point A to point B. It goes around the whole entire world in a continuous loop. So that's what they're living on right now. They cannot set foot outside or else they will freeze to death because it's a frozen wasteland. Earth is a frozen wasteland. And um, now we have this we have these survivors on this train called Snowpiercer. And um, even though they're the last humans left, uh, the train is still divided based on your social status. What I mean by that is all the rich and all the wealthy people are at the front of the train, first class. And all of the poor people are smuggled together on the back of the train at the tail, in the tail of the train. And the, the people, the poor people living in the back of the train, they're living in terrible conditions. They want to rebel and get to fight their way to the front of the train to stay in the front of the train. And they are going to be led by uh, Curtis Everett, played by Chris Evans. And that is all I'm going to say about Snowpiercer. Now, they not only want to go to the front of the train, obviously, for better con living conditions. There is a reason why Chris Evans' character is leading this rebellion. And it's a reason I'm not going to get into because I don't want to touch on spoilers for the movie. But that is basically the whole premise behind Snowpiercer. And I know that the plot isn't all that, like the, the essential premise isn't all that original. You know, we've seen movies with, you know, failed experiment, most Earth population dies out, we only have a few survivors left. We've seen that before. But Snowpiercer definitely took that, that premise right there, 
sets the whole movie on a train and, and throws m many different things in your way, many different unexpected things. So it definitely puts a spin on that. And that is why Snowpiercer is one of the most original films I've seen this year, even though that, that essential core premise we've seen before. But a good vast majority of this movie is entirely original, entirely creative, unique, and I really like that about the movie. Guys, I'm just going to come out and say I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Snowpiercer is awesome. It's one of the best movies of the year. And I'm not going to say it's one of the biggest surprises of the year for me because um, I, I wasn't really expecting anything. I didn't know anything about the movie going into it. But as I'm watching it, I'm like, holy crap, this movie is really good. I don't know how this flew under my radar and why it didn't get a, a wide release. I really don't know why. But um, again, the filmmaker, I'm sorry I'm reading from his name, guys. I, I, I can't get his name. Uh, Bong Joon Ho. I hope I'm not saying it right. Um... That's his name. I, I gotta salute him. He did a very good job um, for various reasons too, working with American actors. I'll get into that later. But uh, yeah, Bung Jun Ho directed this movie, and I think they shot some of the movie in, in Korea. They shot some of it in Austria, I think. I forget where. But uh, anyway, yes. Um, so I gotta say, I really enjoyed Snowpiercer. And one of the main reasons why I love the movie. You know, it's not like the, the cinematography or, like, the uh, the score blew me away. You know, anything like that. Like, all that was decent with the movie. But what really stands out, what is on fire in this movie, is the story, in my opinion. Because what really, you know, just shocks me is the fact that all of these surviving humans are on this train, yet the themes of separation in society, you know, and splitting people up by social class and social hierarchy, you know, and the separation of the poor and, and the rich. What really impressed me of that is not only that those themes are in this movie and they're played out very well, but the fact that the only surviving humans left on Earth still are going to separate people based on their social status, even when they're the only people left uh, on this one train called Snowpiercer. That just amazes me. There were several points in this movie where, you know, certain things happen, certain actions unfold, and it just opens my mind to a whole bunch of different things. It's one of those movies that really makes you say to yourself, wow, that is the sad truth that is our society. We separate people based on their social status in, in, in society. They, we, we have the poor at the bottom, we have the middle class, we have the upper class people. And that, that is unfortunately how it is. And it, it's really sad at the same time, but it's also very interesting, very intriguing, and that makes this movie very different from other movies I've seen that may be similar to it and very unique. And that's what I loved about Snowpiercer. Now I'm going to briefly get into the cast, uh, but we have Chris Evans at the head of the movie. And my oh my... As I was watching the movie, I'm not sitting there saying, oh, okay, I'm watching Captain America without the shield on this train. You know, remember the sequence from Captain America, the, one, uh, the first Avenger, where he goes on the train and he fights off the Hydra soldiers, okay? You know, at a point, I'm like, holy crap, Chris Evans is on the train again, but he's not, he doesn't have a shield and he doesn't have the outfit on. But uh, I, I kid you not, guys, I did not see Captain America while I, was, while I was watching this movie. I saw Chris Evans. Chris Evans is incredible in this movie. I really enjoyed his character because they really didn't you know, divulge too much information about him as the film, when the film opens, you know, they kind of, you know, kept things quiet, dumbed down a bit, and they sort of, you know, gave us, they gave us little snippets uh, as his, into his character's past, and eventually we find out what his motives are, why he's doing what he's doing, what happened in his past, and the scene where we, where all that unfolds and, and we see why he's doing this was touching. It really hit me because of how good his performance was. Um, it was an emotionally really solid performance. Uh, Chris Evans was absolutely amazing, terrific. Uh, really, really good job by him. And I, I kid you not, I did not. He is a really talented actor, and I was really. This is arguably one of his best roles I've seen him in. Not in you know uh, uh, one of the Marvel movies. He was incredible in this movie. Great year for him. This and Captain America Winter Soldier. Now supporting actors, we have John Hurt in the movie, uh, also playing one of the poor, you know, who's trying to rebel. Uh, one of the authority figures of the poor, actually. Uh, Jamie Bell, whose character is very close to Chris Evans's character. We have Octavia Spencer, who's again playing another one of the poor characters, who is very good in everything she's in. Uh, we have Tilda Swinton, 
uh, who makes an appearance in the movie, Ed Harris, and we have another Korean actor, and I can't remember his name, and nor am I going to pronounce it right, Song, no, Song Kong Ho, also I have bad handwriting, I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, he also plays a very important character in the movie, so not only was Chris Evans really good, and did he carry this movie as he was meant to, uh, the supporting cast was gave really solid work and definitely kept the movie going, uh, in my opinion. So that's what I have to say about that. Now, getting into my rating, guys. Snowpiercer is a movie that really blows you away from a storytelling standpoint, from an acting standpoint, and also from a directorial standpoint because of what the director had to go through to film these scenes, even though he's a Korean filmmaker. And I really... I, I'm going to touch upon that, but... um. Again, as I said, Snowpiercer is unique, it's different, it's creative, it's inventive, it's one of the most special movies I've seen of the year. It's also one of the best action thrillers I've seen in the year. There are some great action sequences and some really good amount, really good amount of violence in this movie that I wasn't expecting. The movie took a hard left and I'm like, whoa, it got very violent. And I like that about the movie. I, I wasn't expecting that. The, the, the best thing about Snowpiercer is that I went into this movie not knowing what was going to happen, had no idea what the movie was about, and I, I came out loving it. And for that reason, I'm going to give Snowpiercer a very solid 9.25 out of 10, which I believe is an A-. I, I love the movie, guys, and I, I'm already highly, highly recommending it to anyone who hasn't seen it, because I know a lot of people haven't seen it yet. And, um... Getting again into the things I love, like I already touched upon the story. Uh, it, it's just one of those stories that just opens your eyes to how society really is. Even though this is just a movie just depicting what society is and what society does to people and how we were split up via class. Okay, and I really like that. The themes of social hierarchy, the distribution of, uh, of a person's social, sta uh, social status, distribution of wealth, you know, the rich and the poor, rich versus the poor. I really liked that. All of those themes that were excellently portrayed in this movie. Um, so a great theme in, or two in there about sacrifice and stuff like that. And I really liked that, all of that about Snowpiercer. The movie was just so smartly written. And not only was... Did I love those individual themes and messages that were interwoven into the movie? The movie also was very fast-paced, very gripping, very action-packed, which was another solid uh, thing I loved about the storytelling. Um, but again, again, it's those social themes that really, really hit me and made me say to myself, wow, it's crazy that they're doing this on a train. But then again, that's what humans do. That's what we're, what we're about. Yeah, we, we do deep, dark, dirty, messed up stuff like that. We we split people up based on their social status, but it happens. That's what we are. We're humans. And I love that about the story. The The writing was excellent. Phenomenal writing here. Great dialogue sequences. Really touching scene between Chris Evans and another character. I really loved all that about the movie. Moving on. Uh, the cast was incredible. Excellent uh, performances from all of the actors. Chris Evans at the head. Best terrific performance, best role of the movie, and uh, the, the supporting actors also gave very good performances. The South Korean filmmaker, Bong Joon-ho, also did a very good job uh, directing the movie because he's never, I don't think he's ever worked with American actors before, so he's working with mostly American actors in this movie, and 80, per, I read online, 80% of the movie is English, is shot in English. The other 20 was shot in, in, in Korean, you know, the, the, the other dialogue. So that is really freaking impressive. So I've really got to praise the director for that. Um, also, the movie was incredibly well edited, and the production design on the train was great. Like, as they go through each compartment to get further into the front of the train as the rebellion is going on, I'm like, wow. Uh, I'm seeing all these different compartments, and it really blew me away. I really like stuff like that. And um, I loved all that. And last but not least, the action, the violence... Uh, just the perfect amount. There's a lot of it in the movie. It's it's pulse bounding. It's one of those pulse bounding action thrillers that I really got drawn into uh, because of how good the action, the violence was, and how every scene was gripping and you felt the tension. I really love that about Snowpiercer. If I had one thing to complain about with the movie, I would say that the ending is what ultimately got me a little upset. Uh, I mean, the the very end was nice. But there is a component of the ending that made me say, nope, it's Hollywood bullshit, wouldn't have happened. Uh, and if you guys have seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. So that's all I'm going to say about 
Snowpiercer. Uh, if I, that's my only complaint with the movie. Nevertheless, it is a very, very good movie. Not, I'm not going to go higher at my score, though. 9.25 out of 10 for me. It's still a very good grade, and it's one of my favorite movies of the year. I highly recommend this to you guys. If you're a fan of sci-fi, if you're a fan of action movies, it takes those two genres, mixes them very well together, and for that reason, I think you're really going to like the movie if you haven't seen it. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. What did you think of Snowpiercer? Let me know down below. I'm curious to know what you guys thought of the movie. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Bye.